for those masters and guests. It's time for the most exciting, the most challenging part of our meeting, table topics. Before you were just sitting, relaxed, listening to the speeches, to the evaluations, but now I offer you to seize the moment and to take active part into, uh, in the table topic session. Um, let me explain you the rules. I will pose you some questions and you will have something about one or two minutes to express your opinion on these questions. The general theme of today's table topics is audacity, how I have already announced. I decided that it's a good theme because telling the truth, table topics for me is the most scary part of the meeting and probably I'm not alone having this fear. So I thought that it would be good for us to discuss this thing, why do we actually have these fears and how we can ameliorate <coughs> this situation. So to begin with I would like to say, I would like to ask all of you, is anyone here has a fear of uh, public speaking. Please raise your hand if you wow, lots of hands. Almost everyone. That's encouraging, so I'm not the only one in this class. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have seen a newcomer, Yelena, right? Not exactly. So, so you say that you do have fear of public speaking. In this case, may I invite you today. Right away, I want to grant you with this candy to agreeing for, for such a role. Thank you you so see, much. Uh, we haven't even started to it's, yeah, it's my business. We haven't <laughs> even started to talk, and you already get benefits from overcoming your peers. Um, the question that I would like to ask you: Why do you actually afraid of delivering speeches in public? That's a quite a tricky question. I think that because when I speak, and it really matters at the time of the speaking, you're always <laughs> afraid of making something wrong and to fail in the end. That something you have been working so hard for quite a long time, the work you have been doing somewhere hiddenly, when you come up and you are supposed to speak up, somehow you can you know, something can go wrong and you can fail, and this is the biggest fear I think I have. That at some point, I can fail in the end. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone who wants, yeah, Natalia, thank you. Master, dear fellows, I also raise here my hand when on your when you ask about trembling, speaking, and on the podium. I think there are two main things when I am afraid to speak. The first one, it seems to me that it will be not interesting for the audience and for the some persons my here story, maybe my simply subject of speaking. One. And the second one, I am afraid to waste somebody's time. Because they thought, what are you she's speaking, I am waste of sitting and wasting time. Oh. That's Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I have more candies here. Can I taste it? Yeah, please, Mikhail. I'm not sure I have much to say, but I do love candy, so I thought I'd have to say uh, On a more serious note, I think uh, one of the reasons that it's hard for most people to say something like this publicly is that most of our experience in communication is when we communicate on the same level, so to say, of focus and attention. Like, if we're just having a friendly chat with Nick and there's no one else around, uh, he probably pays the same amount of attention to me as I pay to him. And so it's like, 
uh, like uh, level communication. When you say something to the audience, you immediately become the focus of their attention, at least until you lose it if you ramble as I do. Uh, so it's really stressful and I guess it's a purely instinctive response and the only way to overcome, is, uh, to overcome it is to practice and of course to think of the candy you're going to get as an award. Thank you. <laughs> yes. speaking uh, because I'm afraid that people will not like me, will not like me as a person, or maybe they will not agree with my opinion, or they will not uh, accept some parts of my character, or of my personality, or uh, they will not uh, agree with uh, something that I did in my past, or maybe I will share some experience that they will not like. Uh, or or probably I will say something very stupid. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, then it. Yeah. Uh, well, firstly, I'd like to say that I totally agree with all you, and one of uh, the biggest fears uh, is. Uh, is our fear of how people will meet us when we're on stage. Yeah, but I'd like to outline another fear which bothers me uh, the most. It's uh, the fear of not being, uh, uh, how to say, a professional enough in a topic that I'm about to present. So, and uh, for example, uh, I'm a musician. This is my hobby and I have my own musical band. So I'm quite, uh, uh, I say I'm quite used to go to come up on stage and to play some music, and I clearly remember those times when I only, uh, when I was only in the beginning of my way, and uh, I was not confident uh, enough uh, in my guitar. So I was like uh, balancing on a thin rope, like an equilibrist, and one like step, and I say left right, and I fall. So this was my fear. But as I began to play more and more and more, uh, I, uh, how to say, uh, I learned to improvise. And I think that it's a very important uh, thing to, to get rid of your fears, is to be able to improvise on stage. And this comes only when you, became more, when you become more professional in what you're about to present. So this is my fear uh, when I'm presenting, I don't know, a topic that I know little about it and I don't know if any maybe questions uh, that people may ask from the audience and I will not be able to answer Is anyone still afraid of public speaking? No one? <laughs> oh, yeah. no. So, okay, no. thanks. <coughs> Hello, Toastmasters and dear guests. I'll tell you about my first speech in front of public. I was 20, 27 years old. I was responsible in our scientific research institute for physical culture. And it was my uh, task to go to the conference and listen and uh, uh, take some ideas from it. I was very busy, I take to the conference, it was absolutely uninteresting for me. I take uh, my two deep, big dictionaries and I was sitting <laughs> in uh, far from the uh, restaurant. But suddenly an idea struck me <laughs> and I asked uh, word. Uh, Organizers were very glad because I was not prepared speaker. It's very rare thing was in that at such conferences. I uh, go to the restroom and see many people who were looking at me. 
white tan was stuck. White knees were noodle knees. Noodle, noodle knees. But uh, I have enough audacity. I press myself together and say a few words. And uh, my words were accepted by public. It was my first speech in front of the public. Yeah. misunderstandings with our colleagues, uh, friends, relatives. So um, it was uh, one of the uh, impulse and reason uh, to uh, communicate and to bring us uh, my um, uh, speaking English. Uh, so uh, and visiting a uh, conversation club uh, because um, I think that uh, we should um, We shall uh, fight with our phrase, and uh, uh, only uh, it is only one way uh, to um, um, uh, to get uh, a real result and uh, uh, to reach a, a good achievement and improve uh, our uh, pra uh, practice uh, and speaking in, in speaks speaking skills. So sorry, uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, so. It was one of the reasons uh, uh, to visit uh, this conversation club. Um, so, and uh, I like, and I uh, happy that I can do it. And uh, now I can uh, speak in English and communicate with my colleagues and friends. That's a really good achievement for me. Thank you for <laughs> somebody in uh, USA, in, uh, in London, I can speak with a person, but not so quickly, and I must think what I want to do. And especially, of course, often I don't understand the quick English uh, speech. And I tell you, once I was in uh, San Diego, and I looked and found the, um, such uh, a club is a house. There are seven, I think. And they called one club and told that I'm from Moscow, from such club. And may I come to them? They were very glad, invited me. I came, I told them about uh, our club. I have even some photos of video of our uh, meetings. And I was um, taken there very, very friendly. But then I was sitting and listening to their project. You know, from five or six projects, I understood only one. The woman told how she changed one friend, one boyfriend for another, and nothing more. And then they asked me, please, I was very talented. I didn't know what to do. I told, excuse me for me, your speech was too quick. And I only te uh, can tell you that I like your friend uh, situation, your uh, everything, how you do it. <laughs> it was like to say that oh, here just no, I'd like to say that audacity comes only with the practice or under the influence of circumstances. Wow. Yeah. Uh, having passed through the severe school of Institute of Foreign Languages, I was afraid <coughs> to speak publicly or uh, being afraid of making a mistake because we were severely if not physically then morally punished for that. And only thanks to the Americans with whom well it so happened. I worked as an interpreter you know, this uh, uh, <coughs> group coming here as uh, 
documentary, and we were working in the Duma, and I had to interpret for the big audience. It was already late to be afraid. So they, um, now I'm very thankful to this group because they uh, taught me uh, to rush forward and to forget about everything around and just put a wall between yourself and the audience and don't look in the eyes <laughs> uh, for the first time. But then I forgot about any uh, fright whatsoever because they were keeping me floating, uh, giving our compliments, they were very complimentary and thankful and so on. That's added much to my, if not boldness, then audacity. Uh, and under the influence of that atmosphere or these circumstances, I just forgot about being afraid of speaking before the audience. Okay, that's great. Uh, Olga? Yeah. Uh, the idea about the necessity of rushing forward. Once there was a case in my life when I had to interpret for the American lawyers uh, the excursion uh, to the horse breeding plot. Yes. Uh, uh, to tell you frankly, I know only one word, stables, the place where the horses are located. So, but there was no way out of the situation and somehow I managed to describe what was going on, uh, to describe the uh, description uh, of uh, the manager of that, of that horse breeding plant. But, <laughs> After that, the head of the American delegation thanked me very much and said, you were a great interpreter. <laughs> I, I want to say, okay. uh, the point is, uh, around eight years ago, I was in the uh, oil product retail, retail business and, um, and uh, I was, uh, was acquainted with the uh, previous president of a uh, well-known uh, Russian movement, Apora, Apora RC, uh, Sergei Borisov. And once upon a time, one uh, risky American businessman came, came to, to our office and, um, and offered some, some, some project. It was a real adventure. And to, to, he was, uh, as I like, and as I understand right now, it was a very risky project. But nevertheless, he was a very good speaker. He persuaded us to to, to be inside this project, and we was acquainted with, with um, Sergei Borisov, and I went to, to his office and offered him that I can uh, explain uh, this this project maybe in in, 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 the, in this party. And Sergei Borisov know, know knew, knew me very well, and he invited to to be a speaker on the, their big meeting, annual meeting. And uh, fi finally, uh, the the main person of this uh, project, American Risky Man, he did not came to this conference, but, but I came. And uh, Sergei Boris invited me to, 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 to the stage before 500 people from all over the Russia. And during 15 minutes, I, I, I spoke about this project. It was absolutely risky um, speech, but nevertheless, I, I took an applause. Oh, yes, for more yes. <laughs> so, it looks like everyone healed and no one is afraid of public speaking anymore. That's great. And um, I would like to invite on the stage an experienced member of this club. I'm talking about Denise Shevchuk and telling the truth, I'm admired uh, of Denise being able to incorporate words of the days in his speech and uh, to be native, to, to be na natural on the stage. So Denise, could you please tell us, what's your secret? <laughs> 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 
Good evening, Mr. Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I am honored, if not flattered, by your words. What can I say? Some part of it is genetics. <laughs> While some of you deliver your first speech when you were 27, some of you deliver your first speech when you were 30 something, I delivered my first speech when I, when I started talking. It usually <laughs> happened like that. We were going by train to Azerbaijan where my grandparents lived, and I was running through the car we were driving, and I was talking to everybody. I was looking into almost every room, each room, and delivering many speeches <laughs> for the people there. Some of them even enjoyed it. Well, after some time, I started being afraid of people thinking bad about me and things like that. By the way, I actually want to take the stage during your first question and tell something to the audience about the fear of public speaking. I don't think that many of you fear public speaking. There are two things. There is nervous agitation, being nervous, and there is fear. I think when you see a wild dog running at you, you're not agitated, you're not nervous, you fear the dog. When a group of young men running at you and shouting, hey, we will beat you up in a couple of seconds, you're probably fear, fear them. But when you're about to deliver your speech, you're just nervous, you're preparing, your body's preparing. To tell you the truth, when I leave my job, not even my job, at about 3 p.m. at my job, the day when I'm about to come to, to the stage, to the club, and tell you something, I start being nervous. When I go to Metro, I'm nervous. When I enter the room, I'm nervous. When I to take the stage, I'm nervous. But I grew to accept the nervousness as being natural. And it usually helps you perform better. Well, now I definitely feel better. Even Denise feels nervous, then it's okay. <laughs> we are out of time, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Maybe oh. we have extra time since. Yes, we uh, here because. Uh, we can yeah. only two speakers yeah, and yeah. two evaluators. We can, we can continue till, I don't know. <laughs> five, five minutes, yes. Okay. Um, then I would like to invite one of the native speakers to the stage because I really wonder if there is any difference between natives and. Uh, us, normal people. <laughs> because it seems to me that native speakers should have some advantage over us. Is it true or not, Sally? Can you tell us? <laughs> Listening to everybody talking, and everyone is so, I'm very impressed, obviously, because a lot of people here are not native speakers, and they come up and they speak, in my opinion, very well. And I'm really afraid of public speaking, and that's why I decided to... Not so quickly. Sorry. <laughs> so this is, this is what I do when I'm afraid of public speaking. I go, boom, and say it really quickly, so I will try and speak slower. Um, I did a coaching course just before Christmas and I had to speak in front of new people and I've always been afraid of public speaking right from being a small girl at school. Every year we had to go on stage and say a poem in front of lots of schools from all the different counties and I did it once and every year after that I would be there saying, God, next and there's the judges sitting behind me and I think five times I refused to go to the stage because I just froze. Even my parents would say, if you do it, I've got a big present for you afterwards. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And I'm sitting there and they call my name and I'm like, and I, I didn't go. So my parents were very embarrassed with me. And then afterwards I was very angry with myself because it's silly. Um, but I've always had it. So um, this is why I came here, to, to try and um, get over the fear. And I'm English, and I, I speak English, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm in awe of all the Russian people here speaking English, because it's probably twice as hard. But I think you will do very well. Thank you so, looks like everyone is equal in the face of public speaking. 
That's great. Thomas, maybe you want to add anything <laughs> about <laughs> native public speaking? Yeah. Public speaking. They say that children are not afraid of anything. That they go up to other people, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? This is great. And they don't have any problems. And that we learn somewhere around seven years old to start going, who's that guy? And around six or seven years old, we start to get in groups. It's us. We're together. And the new person, we don't like. <laughs> it's about six, seven years old. And this is also about identity, who we are as, a, as people, and how we approach new situations, whether we are in the group or out of the group. And the person who's out of the group is the public speaker. Obviously, he's the one who's going to stand up in front of you and say, I have to tell you something that you need to know. Uh, I have to persuade you. I have to convince you of something or make you like me. Uh, and so the group, this automatically becomes one big group. And we're all going, so, you. And we all feel that. One way to avoid this is to have the audacity to be a child. Uh, how do you be a child? Well, you're an idiot, basically. <laughs> I, I, I'm an idiot. I, I have no clue about anything. And I'm also an egotist. So I assume that nobody else really knows anything more. So I always assume that we're sort of equal. And then if you're going to judge me, well, that's kind of your problem, not mine. Uh, if you're going to say, well, you know, I don't really agree with that, well, it's, you know, that's life. It's going to happen, you know. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Dennis was talking about the bubble. The bubble is what protects you. You're up here, and this is up there, you know, no, he doesn't like you, that's okay. But if you're an idiot, you've, al you've already been criticized. You have already lost. You have already failed. You have already lost everything. You have nothing left. <laughs> so you're equal. You are one with the group. So that, for me, audacity is not the smell of, like, I'm going to teach you. It's more like, smell me. Like, mm. hey, we're all family here. Be cool. Thank you very much, Thomas. That was truly enlightening. Not only for me, but I think for all of us. And, um, I think uh, now it's time to wrap up. Thank you everyone for participation in this table topic sec session, please. Fill the papers, vote for, for someone uh, that you think delivered the most impressive speech and then pass it to Sally Don't forget to vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.